This is Lorraine with Shenanbrook Cottage. This is floss tube number two. Hopefully this time I have the camera flipped opposite from last time because all the comments were super kind and the feedback was that I had the camera situated in such a way that it was I was cutting off the things I was trying to show you. So hopefully this time I got it right. If not, let me know. Just for reference, I had the phone facing horizontal this time, so hopefully that does the trick. Um, today is Saturday, August 20th, and um, my goal was to film yesterday, but I don't know if you can tell, like this whole week I've had a terrible cold. My entire department at work has had a cold. So if there is some kind of weird pauses in this video, it's because I'm stopping it to cough or blow my nose or whatever. Hopefully the day quill keeps it at a minimum. So um, I had so much fun. I am like living a high because I have 46 followers. Woohoo! We're just like tearing it up on YouTube now. Um, yeah, all joking aside though, it is super cool that some people enjoyed what I had to show because um, I love watching floss tube. <laughs> Um, the cross stitch, the quilting, everything. I just love what everyone has to share. Um, oh, also somebody asked me to mention early in the video, um, I'm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, just in case you wanted to know that. That's where I'm from. I grew up in the Midwest, but um, came out to the East Coast probably 25 or plus years ago. Anywho, let's just jump right in so it doesn't, you know, get to be long. So last time I said that I was going to focus on cross stitch, quilting, and sewing. Those are my three main hobbies. So for cross stitch, um, I didn't do a whole lot this past couple weeks. I was kind of like a dog with a bone with my um, Stitching with the Housewives month to month August. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm not going to do September right now because I was waiting for October, which did arrive, and I'm super excited. But look how much progress I made on August. So let me hold it up. And hopefully y'all are seeing this. And I will um, try and figure out how to insert a photo from last time. Because, I mean, I made a ton of progress. Um, I did run out of, whoops, my magnet's catching on everything. I did run out of um, the yellow, the queen bee, and I didn't have any in my stash because I don't normally use fancy floss, but on a coincidence today, I had to drive up to Lancaster, and I found a local needle workshop there, and they had that floss, so I was really excited, um, so I can just, maybe tonight, I don't think I'm working it tonight, but tomorrow I'll probably try and really almost finish it, definitely finish it this week so I can move on to October. So that's all I have today for cross stitch. So if you're only here for a cross stitch, I understand if you wanna leave. So um, I'm okay with that, you know, cause I want everyone to be happy. So I'm gonna move on to quilting and I like just pulled a ton of stuff. So let me just, jump right in and show you what I got going on. Oh, so we're gonna have quilting today. We're gonna have quilting scraps. We're gonna have a little bit about um, rug making with my scraps and I have haul. I'm not gonna do any sewing because as I was pulling out all the quilting stuff, I realized I had a lot. And again, I just don't want this video to be like super, super long, especially if I happen to be filming the wrong way again. <laughs> I don't know, but we'll see. So, um. Anyway, let me, uh, I'm sorry if I'm putting my back to you. I got them stacked up behind me here real quick. So, oh, okay. So let's just start with these. These are not quilts, but they're kind of like quilting, but they're kind of like sewing. I made my granddaughter, Lily, one of these. This isn't the one. Hers is already all boogered up. But um, one of my bucket list items is to enter things in the county fair. I've been saying I want to do this for like 20 years. I haven't done it. So this, there was a category I don't remember what department it was, but anyway, it's like a, a little hand quilted item. So I'm gonna save that one for the county fair next year. Then here's a second one I made. Oh, and this fabric is, um, I think this was a Sweetwater Charm Pack. I adore this print. 
Now this one here is like a little boy one. Um, I don't have any little boys in my life right now. Um, well, I do, I have a nephew, but this is too big for him. He's really little. So I might put this in my Etsy shop, but this was using some Lori Holt B plaid fabric that came in one of my Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I think it was a sew sampler box. And I didn't want to do the, like the little quilt they had designed for it, but I thought it was really cute for a boy bib, like, like a farmer guy. Anyway, I like that. So, and then I have like these little snaps and these are cam snaps. I just got them off Amazon and they're super easy to use and they come in a lot of colors. And I say they're super easy to use, but I don't have my glasses on. Remember, I can't see very well. Well, anyway, I'll fuss with that later. I can't see what I'm doing. So let's move on to real quilting. Oh, I lied. I lied, I lied. Okay, so this is a quilt that went awry. This was supposed to be Lori Holt's chicken salad quilt along. And I loved it. I bought, um, you know, the simple shapes and watched the videos. Here's another one. There's, I did three blocks. And the third one is made into a pillow on my bed. And these two are ready to be made into pillows as well for my bed. Um, I just got to buy the pillow forms. But, I mean, nothing wrong with the pattern or anything like that. It was just me. I have done applique before, but this was the first time I used um, her technique. And I found it kind of um, time consuming, which, you know, it gives you a really nice finish but it just wasn't the right one for me. Um, so I, I stopped after three. And like I said, I made one into a pillow that's on my bed. I should have grabbed that, but I forgot. And these two are gonna be made into a pillow. And I'll just have them on our bed because I mean, they are cute and there's no sense in wasting them. And I use this, um, I don't remember the name of the fabric. Um, but if I find it in my little notebook, if I wrote it down, I'll put it in the notes. This time I'll try and do notes because I didn't do notes last time. But um, anyway, if you like a nice, neat applique finish, her technique is really good. It just takes a lot of time. Like she has you use this sewing interfacing and then you're turning the pieces inside out or right side out. Mm, I don't know, it was a little fiddly. I wanted, I wanted to move on. It's cute, but not the right thing for me. And then, okay, here is one that I had so much fun, and I would probably do this one again. It's just a quilt top. Um, let me just, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it justice. Maybe this is why. It was called a Lone Star Sal. And you know what I might do? I might throw these on the porch outside tonight and take some pictures and insert the pictures, maybe, if that seems to suit. I think you get the idea. It's like this giant Lone Star with a bazillion seams going every which way, and it turned out so nice. And here's the back. Like, everything just turned out beautiful. And then... Um, if I do it again, I would um, I would color in a piece of paper, like a graph paper, draw it out and color it in so I could lay my colors more precisely to get a, a better look than just scrappy. But then I did like um, the border. I just used jelly rolls. I just used what I had. And so I did a little scrappy binding or border. Um, I just... I like it. It turned out cute. It's, I'll just toss it there. Let me show you. I had, oh, I had some orphans left over. I don't know if I'll do anything with them or not. But see here, this is how they looked. I'll try and edit that out for you. Let me get a sip here. So that one was called the Lone Star 
patchwork so along and I think she has ongoing ones very easy pattern to follow um, nice tutorials I will look that information up and link it because if you want to try it it's it was a really good pattern I think it was just a PDF I downloaded um, and speaking of easy the next one is I bought this panel because my husband really loves Alaska. I don't know if I mentioned we took a trip there for our honeymoon. Um, he has family there. And so I got this pattern, it's Destinations. I think it's Riley Blake. And again, I'm really thinking I'm gonna need to go outside and take some pictures so you guys can see it. Anyway, the pad, I never used a panel. And then what I did is I had this rust and smoke, it was called jelly roll, very masculine looking. And I kind of just did like a jelly roll race. I just kind of went around and around. Nothing fancy in the least bit about it. The important part was to make something that looked manly that he liked and he likes this a lot. So I need to finish it so I can use it this winter. Oh, look, I got strings all over it, lovely. some woodland type fabric. I bought a lot of it since it's a one-way design. I'll just put that on the back. And then I did finish another quilt recently that I'll insert a picture of that I was very proud of. But here is a piece, I made two of these out of Lori Holt's Farm Girl Vintage 2. She had a pattern for a tractor. So the first, I made one tractor and made it into a quilt for our new nephew. I gave that to them. And then I just um, made a second little block. And maybe, I don't know, make a long pillow out of, I don't know, but I made it. So that was in Lori Holt's Farm Girl Vintage 2 was the pattern for that tractor. And then the fabric was just random fabric to make it look like a John Deere tractor. Um, here is another quilt. I made quilt top, <laughs> it's not finished. I made using jelly rolls. I think this one was called Mary and Bright. And again, I'll look on my phone to see if I have a picture of it laying out on my bed. I made a pretty cute, I don't know, I'm not sure which way is the top. I made a cute design, the way it laid out. It was, it was really pretty. I went a little too scrappy, I realized, on my log cabin. I should have, or not should have, what I'd like to do in the future is, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not so many prints per block. But it's, it's very, very pretty. I like it a lot. If you remember from my first video, I had said that um, I was getting jelly rolls from the Fat Quarter Shop. So you can see a lot of that. These earlier ones were jelly rolls. And now I'm getting the holiday Fat Quarters. I went from jelly rolls to layer cakes to fat quarters. And, I, and um, so anyway, that gives me like a mix and different things to try. Um, oh, and here is, I wanted to show you, this was a quilt that went wrong. <laughs> or not wrong, I just stopped. So this is one block I made. And a my background, my white fabric didn't, doesn't have enough interest for me, and that red is too stark, I believe, for these little woodland creatures on this blue. And I know this was just a very inexpensive um, jelly roll. It wasn't by Moda, so I don't know what you would call a jelly roll. It's not a jelly roll um, from Joann's, and I like it a lot, but I needed to... I need to rethink the background fabric and I need to think rethink the, the center square. 
um, a little bit different. And then I'll continue on with that this winter. So there's that one. And oh, here, let me let me grab that. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I got these totes. Look at these totes. These are awesome. I think the best place to buy these is, I want to say, Michael's usually has them on sale for $4.99 is the best price I've seen on them. But here, it, yeah, here the, here's the little woodland animals. So that, I just thought that was really pretty. And it was called Place in Time. So I don't know if they'll have that again this year or if they'll do something different. And then I tucked this in here, but I don't think I'm going to like that either. I'm not sure. I'll have to play around with it this winter and see. Oh, my inspiration was this for the, the log cabin. There it is. That was very popular last season, this fabric. I don't remember what it was called, but it had like that... um vintage looking Santa Claus in it and the pink and the red it was just really really pretty so that's what inspired me to do my um, Mary and Bright log cabin that I need to uh, quilt this year put it together and quilt it I need to buy backing fabric and then speaking of Christmas sticking with that theme I have this one um here this was a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. It was a mystery and each week they released something different. Let me see if I have a picture of what it was supposed to look like when it was all done. I don't. Well, well, I, I took, this was like one week, one row of stockings. So what I decided to do was do a one hit wonder. All the quilt is gonna be stockings. And my goal is to personalize each one for each family member. So I'll have it on display at Christmas time and I'll have each family member. And I made really good progress last year. I didn't finish. I didn't even finish the top yet, but let me show you what I have done. It looks really pretty. So this is how far I am. And I think I would, um, or what I'm going to do is I'll probably just um, hand embroider or probably embroider the, um, our names, each family member's names, the grandkids, the grown kids, all of that. And this fabric here, uh, let me see, I wrote it down probably. Okay, it was a Riley Blake layer cake. And it was that Farmhouse Christmas Echo Park Paper Company. Yep, Riley Blake Designs. And they're kind of the, the darker Christmas colors because there's some black in there. But yeah, there's one of the blacks. There's the red. It's a really pretty, it's a very uh, rich, traditional looking Christmas. Let me fold this a little nicer and throw back in the box real quick. So did any of you do the Fat Quarter Shop, all the trimmings quilt along last year? And if you did, tell me all about it. What fabric did you use? Did you do the whole thing or did you do part of it? Um, and I just love how they do this. I mean. I know it's a free pattern, but you're still not supposed to show it. But I love how they do this. Like they give you the letters for each one of your cuts so you can stay organized. That is super helpful. I really appreciate all those free patterns. And then, um, speaking of free, let's do this one. This one is this year's, oh, I didn't, my Halloween quilt from last year is with the Halloween decorations, so I don't have that to show you. It was called Bats and Booze. It 
and I did that with the Fat Border Shop, and it was beautiful. And last year, I thought I would save money by choosing my own fabrics, but in the long run, it would have been just as cost effective to just buy the whole kit from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, the only plus size is my quilt looked different. It wasn't like everyone else's, but I really didn't save any money. So this year I ordered all the fabric from them. And um, so here's what it looks like. And it was called uh, the Boo Crew. In addition to the quilt along, they had a cross stitch along, which I didn't do last year or this year, but I did print them, so I have them. And the fabric is, is it me and my sister's design? I have, I have pieces galore. So I have my pieces in my little tote here labeled for the ones that are not done yet. Like see, here's L. And these little alpha bitties, yes, you could do the same thing with post-it notes, but this is so nice, they're plastic. And those of course are from the Fat Quarter Shop who in no shape, way or form has sponsored me nor do they even know I exist, but. Here's another one. And their instructions are so good and clear. Here's the witch's hat. Here's the witch's broom. I'll finish this one up for sure and make it into a little a little itty bitty quilt to display at Halloween time with the one I made last year. That one is a lot of fun. Very easy, fun, you can't go wrong. And then, let's see, then this one here, I was super, super excited about, but there's a problem. What's that say in Houston? We have a problem? There's a problem. So th the problem is just partly some of the choices I made maybe. The quilt pattern is this one. Potluck by a Quilting Life, Sherry McConnell. Great pattern, very cute quilt. The fabric I'm using is, let me find it here, Prairie Days. And it's this red, white, and blue. And I'm pretty close. I'm, whoops, I'm getting there. I mean, we have little flags. We have sheep with flags on their back. We have some florals. Again, I'll have to go outside and hang it up because it'll create like, I don't know if it's called like an Irish chain on the diagonal. These, it looks pretty, but I don't know if you can really tell in, in the lighting in this room, but look, this is my problem. My background fabric, of course, is a white on white. It's very, very light ditzy dots or whatever they're called. There you go. There you can kind of see it. And I, and the sheep are white, right? They're a white, white, but look at this. These pieces here, the florals, they're cream. And I did not pick up on that until I started piecing it together that I have cream and white going on. Now, I showed my husband this and he was kind of like, you know, wrong person to, to ask about it. And then so I called my daughter and she took a look at it and she's like, yeah, that's odd. But I wasn't gonna take it all apart. And then I'm not even sure if I did a cream background, if that would solve the perceived problem I'm having because because it is white. The sheep are white, white. They're not cream white. So, and the flowers like in this background is white. So I don't know if I'm overthinking it, but that was a little disappointing. I'm gonna carry on, I'm gonna finish it. And um, you know, it is what it is. I wanted a red, white, and blue quilt and I'm going to have one. So I'm very close to being done with that one. I think I have one or two more rows to piece, and then I can start adding borders and, 
and the, the inner border, outer border. Um, oh, let me show you this though. This is, the, I ordered this. So it was a layer cake and then I ordered some yardage. That blue is very pretty. That's gonna be my border. I don't have any backing fabric print picked out yet, but I'm thinking maybe I might do a red. I might do a red. I might pre-wash it just to make sure it doesn't bleed. Um, so that is that one. I feel like I'm talking super fast. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, and then the last, let me see, let me look around here. Yeah, this is probably about the last quilt that I have is this. This, I don't know if anybody recognizes these. These were probably 1990s block of the month from Joanne Fabrics. And I've only done a couple of them, but you can see this is on my old machine, which had very little features. And so the the quilting, I did like a small zigzag in the ditch because my stitch in the ditch wasn't looking good. And then I have a flannel and I'm going, it's like kind of like a quilt as you go is how I was treating it. So I need to figure out how to sash it and put it all together. Um, and the colors aren't really my jam, but I wanted to learn how to do all these blocks. And then, so what I did is I did this, I did this cross stitch. I guess I finished it in 18 and I added that to one of the blocks and then I used the embroidery function on, this, on my newer sewing machine with, and I put the year and the campgrounds that we went to. So a lot of the years I'll have the same campgrounds. That one's a little harder to read on camera. And I just, I think that's cool. So it's gonna be like a, a, a quilt for the camper that can get dirty and all of that since it's like this green color. And then here is, I went back, I had a t-shirt for one of the campgrounds and I just put dates on it. So this is a project that has no high priority other than um, keeping up with the, the years, the dates, where we go. So that's kind of my last quilting thing. Then um, what do you guys do with your scraps? Like I know like Lori Holt has this book out right now called Scrappiness is Happiness. And it's in my Fat Quarter Shop shopping cart, which I have the perfect shopping cart built. Cannot wait to hit checkout and have all my stuff come. But um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But like, so anyway, like, so what I've been trying to do is I had this huge basket full of off cuts and random pieces of fabric. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to um, cut them down. See some of these two and a half inch squares. I do have um, a zipper bag hanging up over there that has five inch squares, but the these are two and a half inch. And then what I do is I use them as starters and enders for rows. So I just take two of them and sew them together. And, you know, let me show you another one. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I have them. This is a whole basket of like that are already sewed together. Um, any advice, any tips, any thoughts? What do you think? So there's another one. That one's really pretty. I like that one. So, so I do that with the scraps and then I do, let me show you this. I do this when I'm squaring up stuff. So you can see it has the most recent stuff on top. So these are about one inch strips. Not, some are really short. Some are cut nice and neat. Some are cut like crazy. That was a, from a blouse I made. Uh, here's from a dress I made. And what I've been doing, which I really like doing this, this is the second time, is I've been crocheting them. So I sew them like end to end on the same machine. At first I was like doing like mitered and super pretty and everything the same size. No, you don't have to do that. Just like butt them up together and go. So here's the first rug I made and it's kind of faded looking because I've been using it for a few years and I just now started adding more rows to it. And the middle looks weird, but it does lay flat when it's on the floor.
and it is, you know, the colors are not, are, are not as vibrant because it does get washed probably uh, a couple times a month because we have, we have two dogs, so I'm always washing dog hair out of stuff. And so what I'm doing is I have this really big crochet hook. Let me slip my glasses on so I can see what size this one is. And I'm not really a crocheter or a knitter. I mean, I can do a little. Okay, so this is an N, a 10 millimeter. I don't know how to do that so you can see it. It's super big, super chunky. And all I'm doing is like double double crochets. I think that's what they're called. Let me look. look. Um, yeah, this isn't like, this is just like something that I made up. So I, I do a slip knot, I chain five, I make the circle, and then you find the first loop and you put your hook in it. Yarn over, pull one, pull two, yarn over, chain one, repeat. And then every now and again, as it's getting bigger, the middle gets like really weird and tight. Let me show you the second one I've started. So this, this is what it looks like when you first start. And it really does, it almost looks like some kind of crazy hat. But as you go, out further and further and you kind of work with this it, it it flattens out and you throw it in a wash a couple times it really does flatten out and it looks nice and i think you know this will get weave weaved in so you won't see it um i think they're super pretty you know farmhouse style and it's super relaxing in the winter time because it is kind of heavy and we just like to go boop 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 um and it's a way to use the scraps i just hate throwing all this this fabric away, you know. Oh. So anyway, tell me what you guys do with your scraps and like what size you save and how you save it and what you make with it. Cause I'd really like to know. Um, Cause I really do, I wanna use what I have. You know, I don't wanna be like, I don't know what, but I don't wanna like make huge ottomans or dog beds or something with it. But I do wanna like use the fiber in some way if I can. So, um, the last thing I have, I think, for tonight is um, my haul. So, and I did mention today I had to go to Lancaster, which is like a little over an hour for me, to go to the Apple store for help with something. And then I googled um, needlework stores, so I don't have any by me. And so this was my first time going. It was, um, let me see if I can find the receipt, stitches... Oh my goodness, I can't believe I can't remember. I'll put it in the notes. It was, it was a really cute shop. It was kind of small, but they had so much stuff in there. Um, the ladies in there were very nice, and I got some good stuff. So let me get that and show you guys. So let me find that from today. So I went in there today, and I got what I need to finish my, my uh, August cross stitch, Queen Bee. Then, I've been wanting to try these. These are those little Lori Holt floss drops. And I know, like, her logo is, like, B, B in my bonnet, but they're eggs, and it would have been cute if they were, like, little chickens on there or something. But, you know, what do I know? I don't, I'm not a marketing person. I don't know. But I got, I don't know how many come in this packet, but it's a good many. So, I got those. And then I got this today. So this must have been back in the day when um, Priscilla was working with Hands on Design and they were collaborating with her artwork. So I got that chart, it's very pretty. Oh, and then I also got this today for Iowa. It's um, a Statehood Splendor Series by Thread Milk. Um, I was born in Iowa. I grew up in Illinois, but the Illinois one was kind of, hmm. and they were out of Pennsylvania. They were out of, Alaska was coming out later this week, but so I just got the Iowa one. That'll make a cute fast stitch for Patriotic. And oh, and this is the last thing I got at their little shop. They said they had a local lady make these and you know, I can certainly make these myself, but it's always nice supporting somebody else. And she did a really nice job, and I believe this is Lori Holt fabric, but I just love how she used her Rick Rack here and the gingham fabric. So I got that. 
that was it from that particular store. And then in the mail, I told you I was waiting for my October month to month. So I'm gonna work on my August one, probably one more week. If it's done, great. If not, I can get finished next year. And then, because I'm really excited to start this one. Isn't that pretty? It is so pretty. And look at this floss. Let me open this up and show you guys. And then today I was watching floss tube a little bit. And uh, Priscilla and Chelsea did a sneak peek of November. So the theme is acorns. Um, so that one, I'm guessing the color fab family would be kind of like October's. Um, very fall looking and very pretty. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, this is a pattern that I bought. Let me take it out of the packaging that I fell in love, absolute love with. When I saw it, I don't know where I saw it at. If I saw it on Instagram, it's a nativity. And it's by Stacy. I don't know how to say her last name. It's H-S-U. Some places had full kits. This is the fabric that was used. Um, and I would have loved to have got a full kit. Just wasn't in my budget right now. But I didn't want to miss out, so I definitely got the pattern. But I could either get the full kit, hopefully, at a later time. And if not, I can certainly select my own fabrics. Oh my gosh. So, so sorry. Okay. My next little bit of haul, I don't even know, Walmart, Joann's, probably Walmart. Just some quilt batting so I can get some of these quilt tops done. I think my intention was for the um, Alaska quilt, um, since it's a little bit darker in color, this natural won't show through. I think on the ones with the white background, I'll have to get um, a more pure white batting. But uh, this is my favorite. For it. it is, um, it's affordable. It's needled cotton batting. Um, so it doesn't have any resins or glues. It's needle punched. I don't know. It, it's, I just like it. I like the weight of it. I like um, how it lays in the thickness and all of that. So I have that. Um, this came in the mail. So I guess that's kind of like haul. I subscribed to this. Um, and they also have a pretty good podcast that I listen to, American Patchwork and Quilting, in there. I think this is called a bear paw. I love the fall colors. And then just a little bit of fabric. This is just from Walmart, but isn't that adorable? Wouldn't they make a cute project bag or cross stitch clutch or I don't know what? Or just add to a Halloween fat quarter and make something. And then I thought this was pretty, either a project bag or to just add to the stash for some red. And then this, I got this. I know I, I don't, I should have pulled it out. I'm not very organized. So I'm not feeling great, but look at this ribbon. It's, you know, it's big, it's wide, but I'm pretty sure this matches a cross stitch pattern I bought. So that would be great for finishing it, I think. Put a nice pretty bow on it. And then the very last thing is kind of weird, kind of random, but these back to school supplies. These are like a buck 40, maybe a, not even a dollar 50 at Walmart. And they have like the little thing. And I love buying, I bought like five of them, six of them. So I can have them in all the different project bags. So I always have a little pair of snips with me. Um, and they work. I mean, they're not fancy and they're not pretty, but they certainly get the job done. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, constantly moving a good pair of nips to each project bag. And I think that is it for the quilting portion of this show. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Though I have something here in the background I wanted to show you. So look at this little jar I have. And this is all, now granted, these aren't huge spools. These are, I don't know how many yards, 250 meters, 274 yards, under 300 yards. 
this is how many I've emptied since the beginning of this year. I mean, I sew a lot, but I don't think I sew like a lot. So I don't know. I think I got to get a second jar going. I was just kind of curious how much thread I would go through in a year. I think um, Kimberly at the Fat Quarter Shop had one of her um, larger spools of Aurifil that she uses like the same color for all of her quilting. And she was kind of doing like, I, I forgot, she had some cute name for it. Anyway, she was seeing how long it took her to go through that whole spool. And that kind of sparked my idea. Well, like, well, let me see how many little spools I actually go through in a year. So please, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's my goal is, um, you know, making something that you like, inspiring you, um, you know, a little entertainment. I don't know. Um, I keep saying, um, so, uh, I will try and edit out all the coughs and I will try to add notes for a couple of the particular things. Hopefully that will help you if you like that fabric or that pattern or whatever. And give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, tell your friends. We, we are uh, riding strong over here. I think when I started record, it said I had 46 subscribers. What blew my mind was a one of them is my mother. I didn't even tell her I was doing floss tube. Like she does, like I think she secretly works for the FBI because like, how did she even know? Like, I don't know. I know she's probably watching this right now. Mom, hey, she lives next door. Um, but she told me about floss tube and I was like, what? You watched me? What? what are you talking about? So anyway, so at least I know that my mom is my biggest fan. There's a couple more of you out there that liked what, like what I did last week. So I'm going to try again and shoot for two weeks. In two weeks, we'll touch base on the cross stitch. We'll touch base if I made any progress on the quilting, which I should get potluck done. And then, um, and the Alaska quilt, hopefully I'll get that quilt sandwich done and start quilting that and then oh the third topic maybe next time my focus can be on garment sewing but I'll let you know at the top of the each video that I do that way if there's something that you're more interested in than the other um, you can kind of like pick and choose or hopefully you'll like everything and just hang out and watch and enjoy yourself um, anyway I'm going to say goodbye. I still don't have a cute sign off. Um, maybe I never will. I don't know. Oh, and I also wanted to do, um, I wanted to give a shout out because I did that last time. It's favorite people that I like that you may have not seen, but you might like. So let me think off the top of my head here. Um, Michelle McGraw. And I think it's made by Michelle is her floss tube video. She does, um, a lot of cross stitch as well and a good variety of things she does a lot of varieties she does stand-ups which is something i've never done um so she's a good one i mean everyone's good like even if somebody's not your jam i think it's so cool that they show what they did uh another person i should have wrote this down i'm thinking i want to say java girl stitches but i may have already told you about her last week um, but it still doesn't take away the fact that she's awesome and amazing and she makes the best perfect bows in the whole wide world. Let's talk about quiltings. So somebody to follow for quilting. If you need a long arm quilter, I've never used one. But my um, Instagram, you know, friend, somebody that I follow that I think is interesting and cute is Buffalo Flats Quilts company i think she's based out of chicago and she's always almost like it seems like almost every day she's posting something that she's quilting for someone else and then i think she just did um a i think it was called wood lily it was a vintage quilt block that fat quarter shop just released like a reproduction and then i think buffalo flat quilt company she did her version in blue and yellow and it was really pretty and then of course she did her own long arming so that was pretty so there's a quilter to follow um and you know so anyway so for next time i will be more organized with things that i want to tell you people i want to shout out uh and hopefully i won't have a cold i won't have to like edit out all the coughing and sneezing 
You guys have an awesome, awesome day, weekend, and I will see you in two weeks. Bye.